Hey everybody, Chris Maxwell, the Eco Dweeb. One of the questions I get asked an awful lot when I talk to people about electric vehicles is, why don't car manufacturers put solar panels on the roof of the vehicle so that it can charge while it's parked? So to answer that question, and also to answer the question of how long does it take a Boulder 100 briefcase solar panel to charge a Goal Zero Yeti 1000 lithium battery, I decided to put a solar panel on the roof of my car. So I did this using stuff I already had, um, obviously I already own the solar panels and I already have the clamps, but uh, the roof rack is actually a uh, Sea Sucker knockoff. These are handle on demand, the Amazon special uh, Sea Sucker style suction handles. And I have those uh, stuck on the roof and then I've got my roof rails uh, clamped on to the uh, Sea Sucker knockoffs and then I clamped the solar panel onto that. And as you can see, I can rock the car and it's going nowhere. Um, I also built a wind deflector because after the first day of driving with this thing uh, on the roof, it became very evident that I was gonna go absolutely mad listening to the wind noise. Uh, and this deflector is made out of an Amazon box and is amazingly effective. So let's talk about what this experiment was really about and what the results were. With the panel stuck on the roof, I needed to deplete the battery so it could fully charge. I got it to 6% by charging the Hyundai with it. Now charging the Hyundai from this battery really heats it up, especially when the ambient air temperature is around 90 degrees Fahrenheit and you're sitting in a black car. The battery was at 6% at 7.30 p.m. on Monday. Tuesday at 8.45 a.m. the battery says it's at 22%? Say what? The sun didn't rise until 6.14. How on earth did this thing go from 6 to 22% in two hours? Well, it didn't. At first, I thought the super bright LED street light might have activated the solar panels and charged the battery overnight, but subsequent tests revealed that the panel doesn't activate under the LED street light. Then while talking with my bestie, he mentioned that batteries lose energy when they overheat, just like they do when they freeze. Once the battery cooled down, some percent state of charge was gained. So given this unexpected curveball, I moved the goalpost and started the experiment at 8.45 a.m. on Tuesday with 22% state of charge, and by 3.45 p.m. the battery was up to 57%. Wednesday, the car didn't budge from its sunny parking spot all day. The battery was at 92% state of charge around 8 p.m. Based on this, it's safe to say that the Boulder 100 can add about 35% state of charge on a sunny day with constant exposure. It would likely take two and a half to three days to fully charge the battery from dead. Regarding the question, why don't manufacturers put solar panels on the cars to charge the traction battery? The energy that the Boulder 100 added to the Yeti 1000 battery equals about one mile of range in an EV. Now have this been done using one of the high output panels off the roof of my house, which by the way are more than twice the size of the Goal Zero panel, we likely could have fully charged the battery in a single day, adding about three miles of range to an EV. So the problem manufacturers face is getting a high output panel that is small enough to fit the roof of a car. The idea works, it just isn't efficient and cost-effective enough yet. 